reading today comes to us from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. On that day, when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey? Um, So one of my martial arts instructors, Dan Jones, um, he's now a retired um, Michigan State police officer. He actually was on the protection detail of the the governor of Michigan. awesome person um, and one of my teachers and um, he would end every class we'd work out and he'd end every class uh, still does actually and he would say uh, this saying the wind whispered to the warrior you cannot withstand the storm and the warrior whispers back to the wind I am the storm. That's what comes to mind when we hear this story about Jesus and the coming of the storm. Right? I, I, for as long as I can remember, have loved storms. You know, all these Wednesday nights when we have tornadoes. As my family is running down to the basement, I'm opening the garage door. I'm standing there. Right? And as, you know, my family's screaming, and it's just, it's something, you know, even in my previous profession, whether it was blizzards and, you know, tornadoes or rain, hail, I, I just enjoyed being out in it because there was something about the storm um, that, that is kind of exciting that, that I didn't, you know, some people would just hunker down and go in and whatever, but, um, you know, there's, there's some sense that, I'm not going to give in to it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to shudder in fear. Right? This is this is Jesus. So they've had a hard day at work. I'll, I'll commend to you the fourth chapter of Mark. Um, so he's had a hard day at work, and again, he just <laughs> he's like, "Can we go to the other side? Can we get away from all this? Go to the other side of the lake?" Right? And and uh, he gets in the boat, and in the midst of the storm, Jesus just falls asleep. And that amazes the disciples to the point that they feel the need to, to wake him up. Boss, you know, uh, are, aren't you concerned that we're going to perish? And he's just like, what? and he wakes up, calms the storm, and, and then turns to his disciples and says, why are you afraid? What, what about the storm were you afraid of? You know, do you still have no faith? faith that they could survive in the midst of the storm, that they didn't have to wake him up, that they could deal with it themselves, um, that that they could withstand the storm, they could be the warrior in the story, and and overcome those things. So often, um, and the, you know, we, we call many things storms, you know, whether it's actual weather or uh, chaos and life and in families and all kinds of things and and what 
Jesus calls us to really do is to wade into it. To not be afraid of the wind swirling around and to not be afraid of the loud noises and um, you know the rain and the whatever. Whether figuratively or literally. That we're, just, we're to stand in the midst of it. Um, to, um, to be able to overcome the chaos. Uh, storms throughout scriptures always represents chaos. It typically represents chaos. And so whenever biblically we see storms, it, it's, um, it's this notion of kind of chaos. And Jesus, Jesus wants his disciples, his followers, to stand in the midst of it, to not be afraid, to, to have courage. Um, this week was interesting. Um, each day, I, I got to, uh, part of my function was to, uh, I led morning devotions every morning at camp. And um, each, each day had a theme. So Monday was freedom. Uh, that being a disciple of Jesus means, uh, means being a person of freedom. And then Tuesday was brave. Um, Wednesday was uh, neighborly. Thursday was wisdom, and then Friday was being a follower of Jesus means being disruptive. Now, <laughs> the kids that I had were very excited that they got to be disruptive. I mean, I'd say, oh, slow down! You know, I do not want you going home today and telling your parents <laughs> that Pastor Mike said you could be disruptive. That's not what we're talking about. But we are called to be disrupted for the gospel. We are called to kind of be the storm for the sake of God's kingdom. Uh, we, we are called to stand up in the midst of it and speak truth. We are called to, to stand up for what is right. Even though things around us are telling us to sit down. And so we had just a wonderful conversation with the youth about what that means for them, being children of God, to stand up and, and in the midst of the storm of this world and be children of God and workers of the kingdom. And, and, uh, and it didn't mean that you, they didn't <laughs> go home and not clean their room. That's not what it means. But uh, we too are called to be disruptive, to be the storm, to kind of swirl it in the world, to do, uh, in book study tonight, we talked about this, um, uh, the chapter in the book was embracing the values of the Christian community, in that uh, the values of, of Christian community are different from the values of the world different from the values of society, different from the values of culture. And we are called to embrace the values of Christian community, which then means we stand over against the world. And that is disruptive. Um, we heard, we were talking about, we heard uh, Henry on uh, Sunday morning. And uh, his stories of working with the civil rights movement which was being disruptive to the world, right? And, and we were talking about that tonight in book study too, about there were rules about how you be disruptive, and that was something Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, um, uh, you know, the, the, the trained people on how to be passively disruptive. That it's not just going crazy, but to be disruptive for the gospel. Um, you know, Henry reminded us when he went to the youth gathering and um, the speaker was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. which then led him to his, his uh, work for so, uh, civil rights. So yeah, so it's, 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 it's for us to have that courage to be centered and confident and grounded enough to stand in the storm and not let the storm have us sit down or have us go away. But to really stand up for the gospel, to stand up for what is right, and sometimes that means stirring things up for the kingdom and for God and Christ, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, I 
I've said before, uh, you know, we talked about it on Pentecost. And, you know, when, anywhere in this book, whenever the Holy Spirit shows up, um, the Holy Spirit always spins the people out of control, always spins them into something new and exciting, but, uh, but spins them nonetheless. And so sometimes we just not need to let the Spirit spin us into doing what is right us into standing up, to spin us into being disruptive for the gospel. Um, you know, um, of course, my daughter's Rain, you know that. And uh, we had, when Rain was born early on, um, we had t-shirts that, you know, that said, uh, if you want to see a rain If we want to see the beauty of of that, we have to be willing to be in the storm. Um, God, you know, gives us the, the rainbow as a as a promise of God's relationship with us, and God knows that we stand in the storms of life, and and so the rainbow becomes the symbol that God is with us, and that we're not alone, and that Christ is with us. Survive. That the Spirit is with us and will empower us to have the courage to not only stand in the storm, but when necessary, to be the storm for the kingdom of God. Amen. Today's gospel comes to us from the fourth chapter of Mark. On that day, when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crown behind, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? You may be seated. So one of my martial arts instructors is a man named Dan Jones. Uh, Dan is a retired uh, Michigan State Police officer and um, for many years served on the governor's personal protection team and all that and is one of the most gentlest persons that you could ever meet. Um, and after a day's training, he would end ev every class uh, with a little saying, and it's always stuck with me. And the saying was this. The wind whispered to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. The warrior whispers to the wind, I am the storm. Now there are many iterations of that. You can search online. There are many stories and different characters. I even, I even found a shirt. It's the devil and an Irishman that has the same conversation. <laughs> right? Imagine that, right? Right, right? But I, that's the question to the disciples in today's gospel story. 
this notion about being the storm, right? Um, we heard Stephen read for us from Job, of, of one of my uh, several favorite passages of Scripture, right? Because it says, God speaks to Job in the storm. And of course, God says to Job, where were you when I created the earth? Where? But God speaks in the storm. Right? In the psalm appointed for today, which um, we're not using, um, the Hebrew people hear God speaking in the storm and they realize that it's God's wisdom that's imparted to them that allows them to get through the storm to the other side where they then give thanks and praise to God. But that God speaks in the storm. Sometimes God sends storms to us so that we can pay attention to what God has to say. Amen. Sometimes it takes a storm in our life for us to get it together. Testify, testify. Right, it takes that being shook up. It takes being spun around. It takes, it takes that shaking for us to pay attention and to listen to God. Kind of shake it all out of us a little bit. So God sends the storm at times so that we can listen and hear and learn and realize what we need to focus on to get through, right? God sends the storm. The, I think what Jesus is also asking his, you know, Jesus, if we're only four chapters into Mark, and he's done a lot. In fact, on this day, because it says, the passage starts out on that day, the day that Jesus did a lot, um, Jesus needed a nap, and he says, let's go to the other side. And he lays down in the boat. And in the midst of the storm, right, he's taking a nap. And they wake him up. And he, he questions them. Why, why, why did you think you couldn't get through this storm without me? Why did you have to wake me up? Right? Why, why can't we trust and have faith that I've given you enough to figure it out, to get through the storm, right? That's the question. Um, Christ expects us to work our way through it. Christ, in the midst of the storm, expects us to use the wisdom that God imparts to us in the storm and to get to the other side. Christ wants us to have the faith to know we can do it as everything is spinning around us, right? And so it's learning in the midst of the storm story that, that we are kind of expected to, to ride it out, to work through it. In fact, you know, especially in those times that God sends it to us so that we can figure it out, right? And, and so much so, it's not only riding the storm out, but it's being like Jesus and being comfortable in the storm, being okay, and in fact, maybe even enjoying the storm. Um, former profession, all those years, um, I got to drive around in blizzards and tornadoes and rainstorms and hail and sleet. It was, it was uh, us on the police department, the firefighters and, and the postal workers, right? And we all hung together. And I, I realized I, I could survive, and I, I kind of had fun, right, in the rain. I enjoyed it. Um, it even this morning, uh, we were talking, coming up, you know. About the time I got to the parking lot, the wind was whipping and the rain was pouring. And I just kind of got out of my car and stood there. It was kind of cool, you know. Yeah, a little turtle wax, and it just beads <laughs> and rolls right off right? Yeah, and you're okay. And, I, and it's like, yeah, I don't need to run to the door. I'll be all right. In fact, I'm, I'm going to enjoy being in this moment. Christ wants us um, to be okay in those moments of the storms. Um, 
having faith, having wisdom, having knowledge, having, having the power of the Holy Spirit in the midst of it all. I mean, because the truth is, everywhere in this book, anytime the Holy Spirit shows up, it is never calm. Never. Whenever the Holy Spirit shows up, it whips them around and spins them out of control and sends them down paths that they never thought they were going to go and do things they never thought they were going to do. It just stirs them up, this Holy Spirit. So Christ wants us to be okay in the midst of that because the Holy Spirit's going to show up and we need to be okay and ready for that because we're going to get to the other side. So God speaks to us in the storm. Christ knows we can work our way through the storm. In fact, Christ wants us to be comfortable in the storm because um, just like the warrior, there are days when we are to be the storm. That God uses us to spin the world. And there are times when we need to be that spinningness as powered by the Holy Spirit. Two weeks ago, I got to be um, the chaplain at, at confirmation camp. 65 youth, 25 young adults, right? And uh, we had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful... We didn't have the heat this week. I, I prayed for the camp this week because, man, it was hot. Um, and so one of my, one of my functions was, was morning devotions, right? And each day had a theme, right? Being a follower of Jesus Monday was being a follower of Jesus meant um, that you, we are free. And then being a follower of Jesus means Tuesday was brave. Wednesday was servant, um, Thursday, what was Thursday? A disciple. And then Friday was being a follower of Jesus means you are disruptive. Now imagine kindergartners through high school seniors hearing me say, you get to be disruptive when you go home today at 3 o'clock. They were excited. Right? But I, when we talked about it, it's like, slow down. It doesn't mean you can, you know, tell your parents that Pastor Mike said you don't have to clean your room. That's not what that means. Right? It's being disruptive for the gospel. Being disruptive for the kingdom. Being disruptive uh, for the will of God. We are called to be disruptive. In fact... Uh, the people going on the trip to New Orleans are going to spend the day together and uh, we're going to work through and uh, the curriculum for the pre-training for the trip is the same curriculum as the outdoor camping ministry so today I get to talk to talk to all of us about being disruptive and what that means for us to embrace being the storm last week Henry was here and he stood here and he talked about when he went to the National Youth Gathering. And he got to hear the speaker who was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And that's, that spun him, Henry, into working in the civil rights movement. And uh, powerful stories of being disruptive. Because that's what that movement was and still is today. Uh, it, and in fact, we know um, that in the civil rights movement, King and the leaders of that movement trained people how to be um, rightfully disruptive. Right? Which meant not going to the back of the bus. which meant drinking in water fountains with big signs that said you couldn't. It meant sitting at counters where you were not allowed. 
It meant standing up and speaking up for the gospel and the kingdom of God. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. To be disruptive to the ways of this world. To be disruptive to society and culture. To stand up over against. Um, because the Spirit moves us to do that. That's why we need to be comfortable in the storm so that we can be the storm. Right? Now, what we also learn is that it is not without consequence. We know the history of what happened to the people who worked in the civil rights movement, yes? And it wasn't pleasant. Right? And it means it may not be pleasant for us when we stand up and become the storm and be disruptive. And we need to be okay with that. Right? The text I used on Friday, and don't tell them what the text I'll use today. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a secret, right? Is the Beatitudes, uh, as we find them in Matthew, right? As we find them in Matthew, the Beatitudes are the first verses of the Sermon on the Mount. And we have, you know, blessed are they's, right? We know this. The first four blessed are they's, the first four Beatitudes are the people who need disruption in their lives so that they can be set free. That's the first. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek and the, right? That's the first four. The second set of four are the people who are the disruptors, who go out and do what needs to be done to disrupt so that the first set can be set free. But then Jesus comes to verse 9 and following. And Jesus changes the pronoun from blessed are they to blessed are you. And he says, blessed are you when people revile you and spit on you and try to kill you for my name's sake. And then Jesus says, rejoice in that day. Rejoice in the day that you are so disruptive for the kingdom that people are noticing. Rejoice in that day when you are doing the work of the gospel so much the change is happening and people are becoming angry. Rejoice in that day that you have become the storm and you're spinning the world. That's how the Sermon on the Mount starts. We are called to be the storm for the kingdom. We are called to be the storm for the gospel. We are called to be the storm to be agents of change through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Christ does everything to prepare us for that work so that we can further the kingdom of God. When... Um, when my daughter Rain was born, we got her a little t-shirt because that's what you do, right? And the t-shirt said, um, and I don't even know if she has any, she probably doesn't, she's thrown it out. She's 11. <laughs> she is the storm of my life. Trust me, God sent her to be my storm. And it says, if you want to enjoy the rainbow, you have to be comfortable standing in the rain. God wants us to be comfortable in the rain so that we can be the storm. The rainbow is the symbol that God gave to humanity as God's promise to humanity that God is in charge and God will take care of us. And though, that we are called to go out into the world and be the change that the world needs, the world that God loves so much that God sent us on so that the world could change and that the kingdom of God could enjoy its fullness here and now as it is in heaven forever.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. On that day, when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Marco! No, I, I was trying to figure out how to work that in. I just get it right out of the way. I was, it may come up later in the sermon. It may not. I don't know. I'll try to work it in. So, um... One of my martial arts instructors, uh, Sifu Dan Jones, a retired uh, Michigan State police officer, was on, uh, spent most of his time being on the governor's uh, personal protection team, and just one of the most um, gentle humans you would ever meet, right? Um, after a day's worth of training, he would end every class, right, every day of training, with this little saying, and it is stuck with me, right? And the story goes like this. The wind whispers to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. And the warrior whispers to the wind, I am the storm. That's what Jesus is talking about in this passage of scripture today. This notion of I am the storm. In the gospel lesson, Jesus, we're four chapters in, Jesus has done a lot, and it's been a busy day for Jesus, and um, he needs some Jesus time, right? And he says, let's go to the other side. And uh, they get in a boat, and they start across, and Jesus wants, wants to take a nap. And the storm whips up, and he is sleeping through the storm. And yet the disciples wake him up, but aren't, don't, aren't you afraid that we're going to perish? And he wakes up and he says, peace be still. And the storm stops. But then he turns to the disciples and asks them, why were you afraid? Have you still no faith? Why were they afraid of the storm? Right? In the uh, in the lessons Donna read for us this morning, in Job, um, God speaks to Job in the storm, it says. In the storm, God spoke to Job. And then, of course, God says, where were you when I created the heavens and the earth, right? In the psalm, it says, God spoke and the storm began. God speaks to us in the storm. In fact, God may even send storms so that we pay attention and listen to what God has to say. Right? This notion, sometimes we get so set in ourselves that we need that little shake. In many people's faith stories, uh, 
kind of their re time of rededication back into the faith is in the storms of their lives. And so it's in the storm that God speaks to us, right? In the midst of it, God gives us wisdom and understanding, and God gives us uh, strength and faith. And God speaks to us in the storm, right? Um, I think um, Jesus was tired of speaking and wanted God to speak to them in the storm while he took a nap. When has God spoken to you in the storm? And do we listen? Maybe if we listen more, we wouldn't need as many storms, I guess. I don't know. But God speaks to us in the storm, so we should listen. Right? Not only listen, but Jesus says to his disciples, why were you afraid? Do you still have no faith? You see, Jesus expects us to realize we can make it through the storm, to not let, us, let the storm weigh us down. Right? That's what he challenges his disciples with. Right? Why were you afraid? Just keep on keeping on, even though things are spinning around us this storm. That we are called to, to continue with the work of the kingdom, continue with the work of the gospel, continue serving God and God's purpose and God's will, regardless of what's happening around us. That we should just keep on keeping on through the midst of the storm. So much so that we get comfortable in the storm like Jesus, who is able to lay down and take the nap as the boat starts to sink. Right. Um, previous profession, uh, I, got to, uh, I got to go to work in blizzards and uh, rainstorms and tornadoes and all kinds of wonderful climatic experiences. Right? It was it was police officers, law enforcement, and the postal service, I guess. I don't know, it was out wandering around, right? And, and you, you realize, um, one, it tends to be just you, so there's a lot of time to listen. Two, that you will make it through, regardless of how it might seem. And three, you get comfortable in it, this being in the midst of the storm, right? This morning when I pulled in, the wind had really picked up and the rain was coming down and it was, had a little chill and I got out of the car and I just stood there enjoying the storm. Now, um, I did put the turtle wax on which means it just beads and rolls off. So, you got a little preparation. But I think that's what Jesus expects from us from not only withstanding the storm but to realize uh, we can uh, be comfortable in the midst of the chaos that comes around us. Because we know, we know, right? In this book, right? Anytime the Holy Spirit shows up, it is never calm. Never. Never. The Holy Spirit always shows up and spins us around and causes us to rethink everything and sends us out to do things we never did, to go places we never thought, to speak languages we didn't know. It's never just to be calm. The Holy Spirit's presence is always stormy. And so God wants us to be comfortable, right, in the midst of, of the storm, to, to enjoy it, to realize um, that it's part of who we are, this being the storm. And why God wants that for us, the comfortability, the survival, the listening to God in the midst of the storm, is because there are times when God expects us to be the storm. Right? This, you can find this little saying, right, on uh, Google it, right, different characters, right? It's the same saying, but this one says it's the devil and an Irishman, <laughs> right, saying that. 
But God expects us to be the storm in the world. You. Two weeks ago, I got to spend a week at camp, and uh, I got to be a chaplain, right? 65 kids, uh, 25 young adults who were staff and counselors, right? One of the things I did is I did, I did morning devotions, right? And I would, they gave me this grid. Every day had a theme, right? And they asked politely if I could keep it within the theme. I said, okay, right? So Monday was... Um, being a follower of Jesus means you are free. Tuesday, being a follower of Jesus means you are brave. Wednesday, being a follower of Jesus means you serve. Thursday, being a follower of Jesus means you are a disciple. And Friday, it said being a follower of Jesus means you are... Do you remember what Friday was? What was it? Disruptive. So imagine at 8 o'clock in the morning, I got to tell 65 kids from kindergarten to senior in high school that they get to go home and be disruptive. <laughs> and so I had, we had to take, okay, everybody sit down. Because when your parents show up at 3 o'clock today, I, you cannot tell them you don't have to clean your room because Pastor Mike said you could be disruptive. That's not what we're talking about. And so we had a conversation about what it means to be disruptive for the kingdom of God. Disruptive for the gospel. Disruptive uh, for the will of God in this world. And they were in touch with what it means to be disruptive for God. Um, today, the group that's going to New Orleans, we're going to spend the day together. And uh, the curriculum is similar for the preparation of, of, uh, that was sent to us to do before, to preload for the gathering. It's the same curriculum that uh, they gave, ELCA gave for outdoor ministry. So today, we're going to talk about being disruptive in the world and what that looks like and what that means for us as followers of Christ. Last Sunday... Henry stood here, yes? He did. And he told a story about when he went to the youth gathering. And the speaker was Reverend Dr. Martin Luther. And how that experience disrupted him. And he then joined the civil rights movement, Henry, to be disruptive to the world for the sake of the gospel right and we know historically um, that in the civil rights movement king and the leaders of the movement trained people how to be disruptive for the kingdom of God and what that looked like and what it didn't look like it meant not going to the back of the bus when you were told to do so it meant drinking at water fountains that had a sign that said you couldn't. It meant sitting at counters that you were not allowed to sit at. It meant standing up and speaking the truth to the world. They were disruptive and still are today because we still have work to do. Good brothers and sisters, followers of Christ are called to be disruptive in this world for the kingdom. Right? We are called to go out, spun out of this place into the world to be disruptive for the gospel, for the kingdom. We can't just stand idly by, inside or out. We have to let the Spirit move us. We have to listen to God in the midst of the storm. We have to prepare ourselves and, and we have to go out and stand up over against the world. On Friday morning, the text I used uh, for our youth was the Beatitudes as they come to us in the Gospel of Matthew. The beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. 
starts with the Beatitudes, yes? You can fact check me if you'd like, right? Right, Jesus says, uh, starts it, and you know, blessed are they, blessed are they. There's eight of them, right? The first four, blessed are they's, are the people that need disruption in the world to be set free. The second set of four are the people who are disruptive in the world so that the first set can be set free. And what we know to be true is the world sees both as the same. Whether you need it or do it, the world sees us as the same. Which is why we get to verse 9. And Jesus changes the pronoun. And it's not blessed are they. But the pronoun becomes blessed are you. When the world reviles you and spits on you and tramples you and tries to kill you for my name's sake. And then you move to the next verse and it says what? Rejoice in that day when the world reviles you and spits on you and tries to kill you in my name. Rejoice in that day. Rejoice in the day that you are the storm bringing about change in this world. Rejoice in the day when you are doing the work of the kingdom And it angers people because they don't want change. Rejoice in the day that you stand up for what is right. Rejoice in the day that you bring the kingdom of God a little bit closer to earth. Because being followers of Christ means we are disruptive. Right? Paul reminds us, Uh, in the Corinthians reading we had today, as well as historically, including the civil rights movement, disruption does not come without consequence. If if we think that people are just going to go, oh, you're right, we are sadly mistaken. If you read the reading from 2 Corinthians and Paul lists a whole bunch of stuff imprisonment, death, pain, suffering, right? There is consequence for disruption. Remember the Beatitudes, right? Rejoice in the day people are trying to take us down because we're doing the work of the kingdom, right? We have to be the storm in this world. We have to be. We are called to be. It's our very nature, right? We have to be comfortable with being the storm. We have to be with comfortable, right, to be able to to listen and keep ourselves in the midst of it all, even the chaos that we start ourselves, so that the kingdom can reach its fullness for all, for the world that God loved so much that God sent us on that world. When our daughter Rain was born, we bought her a little t-shirt. And it said, if you want to enjoy the rainbows, you have to get comfortable standing in the rain. God sends the rainbow as a symbol to humanity, from God to humanity, that God has a plan and we are part of it that God will never let it all collapse upon us ever again. And that God will support and encourage and send us wisdom and prepare us for everything that is to come. So go out and stand in the rain. Go out and be the rainbow for somebody in this world today so that they can do it tomorrow. And that is how the world changes. One storm, one rainbow, one person at a time.